Hello students and welcome to uh, your test review for exponents. <laughs> okay, so we're going to be talking about the exponents and all the things that will your test will look like. Um, just to quickly review, there were five exponential properties that we talked about in this unit. The first one is zero exponents, which anything to the zero power is just equal to one, right? Um, it's kind of that nebulous thing between positive and negative exponents that kind of cancels each other out and they just equal one. It's like dividing by itself. Negative exponents, um, anytime we want to change the sign of our exponent, we flip it across the fraction bar, right? Um, we learn this because a lot of times we want to express our exponents as positive, but just a reminder, like this is essentially the same thing. Like if it's one over three to the negative two and three to the positive two, this equals the same number if you plug it in your calculator. It just, anytime you flip across a fraction bar, it changes the sign of your exponent. That's all it does. Um, and then multiplying exponents. So anytime you have um, numbers that have exponents that have the same base and are multiplying, you just add the exponents, right? Like 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 5th, the equal to 4 to the 8th. You just 3 plus 5 is 8. You don't do anything to the base. Okay? Then we did the dividing exponent rule, which was um, essentially the opposite of multiplying, right? When you divide it, you just subtract the exponents 2 minus 5, right? And that would give you your new exponent. Um, and then the last one we talked about is when we raise a power to another power. And in this situation, we just multiply the exponents. And there's not an example there, but that would be like 2 to the 3rd being raised to the 4th power would equal 2 to the 12th power. Because 3 times 4 is 12. Okay. So that's essentially what we're going to be going over for this review. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, and these are going to be super quick. So if you are confused about anything or are moving too fast, remember you can pause and rewind. Um, but here we go. First thing we're going to do, just like any assignment, right? And I know you all do this, right? Every single one of you. You read the directions, right? So <laughs> our directions are simplify. Your answer should be written as a positive exponent and a negative exponent, right? So these first couple, I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit more just because it's such a small looking problem. Okay, first problem you'll see is just 31 to the fourth power. So it's already in its exponential form. We just need to write it as its negative exponent. So we need to flip it across the fraction bar. So it would go downstairs and it become one over 31 to the negative four. Same problem, nothing's really changed with the number, it's just, now at negative four. And I just realized I want my calculator. I don't know where it is, so I'm gonna pause it real quick and come back. Okay, I have my calculator. All is right in the world. Don't worry, guys, I found it. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to show you just real quick that 31 to the fourth is the same as one over 31 to the negative fourth. So if I do 31 to the fourth, it gives me this big old number right here, right? So, Let's try doing the fraction form where we have the negative exponent. So if we do one fraction, no, I did exponent. One fraction, 31 to the negative four. Look at that, I got the same number. It is the same number, right? It is the exact same thing. It's just another way of expressing it. So, okay, here we go. So now number two. This one's already got a negative exponent, so we just need to make it positive. So we're gonna, again, move it downstairs, since it's already upstairs. It becomes one over seven to the positive three. Okay, that's your answer. Two to the zero, anything to the zero power, if we remember our properties that I just went over, is one, so that's my answer. Tough, right? <laughs> 1 over 8 to the second, it's already got its positive exponent form, so we need to make it negative. So again, we just flip it across the fraction bar. It's going to go upstairs, and it's going to become 8 to the negative 2. And that's my answer. Oh, these are tough. 
This one's already negative, so again, I want it as a positive and negative, so I move it upstairs, it becomes 15 to the positive three. And there's your answer, okay? This big old number is raised to the zero power. Anything to zero power, no matter what it is, is one. There's my answer. <laughs> oh, it's a tough test. All right, this one, Remember guys, exponents just mean how many times you're multiplying the number by itself. Now we have some sixes here all by themselves. There's a couple ways you can think about this. We can just think about it into the general like um, there are five sixes here multiplying, so that's six to the fifth, right? Or one over six to the negative fifth, if I write it as a negative exponent. That would be my answers. Another way you could think of it is these are, you know, six numbers with the same base multiplying, so you would add their exponents. But there's no exponent there, right? Again, if there's no exponent, you just, there's an imaginary one there. So it'd be like one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one, which is five, right? So you get the same answer. But just another way of thinking about it. Okay, here's another one we're gonna try. So eight to the negative third times eight to the zero. Again, when they're multiplying, you just add the exponents. Negative three plus zero is still negative three. So 18 to the negative three is one answer. And then you move it downstairs to make it positive, And there's your other answer. Voila. Okay. And then uh, this is one, number nine. Again, we add the exponents since they're all multiplying. So nine plus negative three plus two. And there's no exponent here. So again, remember that just means there's a one above that number, that's gonna probably be one of your most missed things, just FYI. So be aware, if there's no number, there's a one there. Okay, then you would just add them. Nine plus nine of three is six, plus two is eight, plus one is nine. So just ends up back at five to the ninth. And then you'd make it negative by moving it across the fraction bar and it becomes five to the negative ninth. And that would be your two answers. Voila. Okay, then we have some numbers that are dividing. So again, if they're dividing, you just subtract top minus bottom. It would be like nine minus four, which is five. So when we do this, the first number is just gonna be my upstairs number. So seven to the fifth, and then I would move it downstairs, and it'd be one over seven to the negative fifth. And that would be your two answers, okay? Now, this is probably the other thing you guys are gonna miss a lot when you are subtracting a negative number. So this one would be like negative four minus a negative 10, right? When you're subtracting a negative number, remember minus a negative, they turn into a positive and you end up adding 10, right? So it'd be negative four plus 10, which is six. So 11 to the six, and then you'd move it downstairs comes one over 11 to the negative six. And that'd be your two answers. Okay, again, that was minusing a negative, minus a negative, it turns into a plus, right? When you got the neighboring signs right next to each other. And then this one, you'd have negative three minus zero, which is just gonna be negative three, right? So nine to the negative three, and then move it downstairs to become one over nine to the third. And that'd be your two answers. Okay. Ooh, this is a good one. I like this one. Zero minus negative eight. What happens when you minus a negative? You end up adding it, right? So it's zero plus eight, which is eight. So 14 to the eighth. And then you move it downstairs and it becomes one over 14 to the negative eight. That would be your two answers. Okay. And then over here on 14, we've got some numbers multiplying and dividing, right? So we're going to follow our order operations. We're going to do multiplying before dividing. So we're going to add all these numbers on the top first, get them down to a nice single number, and then we'll do the dividing. So 4 plus 6 is 10, plus 5 is 15. So I have 12 to the 15 over 12 to the third, okay? Then I do our subtracting, so 15 minus three is just 12. 
So 12 to the 12th or 1 over 12 to the negative 12. And that'd be my two answers. Okay, so again, I just added the exponents on top first, then I subtracted the dividing exponents, and then I just flipped it to get my negative. Okay. All right, let's try another one. So this one, we have multiplied on both. So we're gonna multiply the top, get it down to the same number, and we're gonna multiply the bottom, get it down to the same number, then we'll do the dividing. So we're going to do our multiplying first. So 4 to the 7th times 4 to the 10, you'd add the exponents, which is 4 to the 17th. And then 12 plus 6 plus negative 2. 12 plus 6 is 18, plus negative 2 is going to be 16. So 4 to the 16. And then you would just subtract. 17 minus 16 is 1. So you'd have 4 to the 1 power or 1 over 4 to the negative 1. Now, anything to the positive 1 power, you could just leave it as the base if you wanted to. You don't have to put that there. But I'm going to put it there. That's a very messy eraser. Um, just so that there's no confusion. Okay. Then, this one, we've got some multiplying on the bottom here, so we're going to do that first. So negative 3 plus 8 is 5, so 15 to the negative 3 over 15 to the 5th. Okay, then we would subtract negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. So 15 to the negative 8, and then we'd push it downstairs to be 1 over 15 to the positive 8. Again, just when you subtract, that first number is just going to be the upstairs base um, and then you just move it downstairs whether it's positive or negative it doesn't matter okay let's look at the next page man you guys are gonna love this test <laughs> there's what is it 37 questions on it i mean obviously they're, they're pretty quick but here we go so power of powers remember a quick rule is we just multiplied the exponents so 6 times 0 is 0, right? So 17 to the 0 is just 1. And that's my answer. Whew, that was tough. Okay. And then this one, we have some multiplying, right? So we're going to do the stuff inside the parentheses first. Okay? Order of operations, PEMDAS, right? Parentheses comes first. That means everything inside the parentheses. So... There is no exponent above that 5, so I put a 1 there. So you would just add them. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. So we have 5 to the negative 3 being raised to the third power. Then we would just multiply the exponents. Negative 3 times 3 is 9. Negative 9. 5 to the negative 9. And then we'd make that positive by moving them downstairs. 1 over 5 to the ninth. And that is my two answers. Okay. This one, again, just multiplying, negative 7 times negative 7 is positive 49. It's a big number. Four, 21 times itself, 49 times. So 21 to 49, again, we need it as a negative exponent too, so we move it downstairs, 1 over 21 to the negative 49. And that would be my two answers. Okay. And then this one, this is a little bit different than this one above it, right? In this one, the multiplying was inside the parentheses, and this time it's outside. So parentheses, there's nothing happening inside, so we're again going to follow our order of operations. We're going to do exponents before we do multiply, PEMDAS, right? Parentheses, exponents, multiply. So we're going to do the exponents first. That's going to give me negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12. So 18 to the 12th times 18 to the 2nd. Then we're going to add. So 12 plus 2 is 14. So 18 to the 14th. Right? And then we'd move it downstairs. be 1 over 18 to the negative 14. And that would be your two answers. Okay. Okay, and then these last two, these all have things inside the parentheses. So again, do the parentheses first. So we're going to do 6 to the 1, plus 10, plus negative 8. So 
1 plus 10 is 11, and then plus negative 8 would be 3. So 6 to the third to the 0. Then we would multiply the exponents, and 3 times 0 is 0, so 6 to the 0 is equal to 1. And that's my answer. Okay. And then this last one right here, before we get into the, the blanks, um, we have, again, multiplying inside the parentheses, so we're going to do that first. So 5 plus negative 7 is negative 2, plus negative 2 is negative 4. So we have 4 to the negative 4 being raised to the negative 2. Then you just multiply the exponents. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8, so 4 to the 8. And then you move it downstairs, it would be 1 over 4 to the negative 8. And that would be your two answers. Okay. Then, on this section, we're going to write down the missing root or exponent that belongs to the box in the equation that makes it true. So, we have some numbers that are multiplying. Again, our rule when we're multiplying is we add the exponents, right? So, 4 plus 0 plus 1 plus something is 6. So, let's think about this. 4 plus 0 is 4, plus 1 is 5. So, what would I add to 5 that would give me 6? Well, it would be 1, right? So the box has to equal 1. It's like, it's that hard, right? If you do like the math up to it, it generally makes it pretty easy. Okay, so that would be your answer there. Okay, then we have the square root of something equals this number. Now, we have to understand, and we did this in the last unit, right? When we solved something that was being squared... So if I had like, um, let's do 16 squared, right? Um, whoops. Well, I just gave you the answer. But let's say I have x squared <laughs> equals 4, right? So to solve that, we had to square root both sides, right? And actually, it should be 16. That's where the 16 should have gone. Okay. So we had to square root both sides. So that gave me x is equal to 4, right? The idea here is that you're trying to figure out what this was originally. Because we have the square root of something equals this. Okay? So basically to undo a square root or go back to my original, I'm just going to square that number. That's it. If it was a cube root, you would cube that number, right? So you're just doing whatever root it is, you're doing that exponent on that number to figure out what was under the root. So it's going to be a big number. So 4913 squared is, woo, very big number. Okay, so the box is going to equal 2413756969. And that would be your answer. 24 million. Who oh boy. <laughs> okay. All right. Same idea on this one. We have the square root of something is 11. Hopefully you know what the what 11 times 11 is. But if you don't, again, you can just do it in your calculator. 11 squared is 121. So that box has to be... 121. And that's your answer. Okay. Now this one is a little bit different because it gives me the cube root of something plus some root. I don't know if it's a square root or a cube root. So I'm going to be putting either a 2 or a 3 into that box. So how I do this is it's just like an equation. I'm going to figure out what the cube root of 343 is. So I do 3 multi root 343 is 7 okay so i just figured out the cube root of 343 is 7 so i know this is 7 7 plus this so i'm going to move this 7 to the other side so i'm going to minus 7 and that gives me something root of 576 is equal to um, 24. Okay. Then, 
it's just a matter of, you could do the square root of 576 and see if it's equal to 24, or you could try squaring this 24 to figure out if it's 576. Um, but I just did the square root. Uh, sorry, we're zoomed in, it's hard for me to figure out where the camera is. <laughs> I just did the square root of 576 is 20, 24. So that means that box has to be a two, because that's a square root. So the box is a two. And that's my answer. It's two. Okay? It is a square root. Same idea on the next one. We have a missing um, box here. So I have a square root of 21.25. That's weird that we put a decimal there. Square root of 21.25 is 14.5. I wonder if we messed up on this. So anyway, then you would minus 14.5 to each side. Oh no, that's why, that's why. I probably did the same thing you guys would do. When we look at this, this is not adding or subtracting, it's multiplying, so this is 14.5. So to get rid of it, instead of adding or subtracting, I have to divide, that's why it's a decimal. Divide by 14.5. So 58 divided by 14.5 is 4. So and it all makes sense now. So that would give me the something root of 64 is equal to 4. Now, we should know that the square root of 16 is 4, so we know it's not going to be a square root. It's pretty obviously going to be a cube root. But we're going to double check it. Cube root of 64 is 4. So... Yay, that means the box is a three. Box is a three, and that's my answer. Okay, and then we got another one where they're multiplying, so it has to equal two in the end, so we're gonna add our exponents, so four plus three is seven. What would I add to seven that would give me two? Well, a negative five, so that box has to equal a negative five, because you gotta take away five from seven to get two, two. Okay, then we're over here, and we're gonna do kind of the same thing. We're minusing the cube root of 216, so cube root of 216 is six. So that's like saying minus six, so we're gonna add six to each side, which gives me the something root of 225 is equal to 15, and I know this answer but we're gonna check it anyway. It's good and we're gonna try square root 225 is 15. So square root of 225 is 15. That means that this is a two. So box has to equal two. And that'd be your answer. Okay, and then we got another one that's multiplying. So this is where we have to divide. So pay close attention to that operation symbol. We're gonna first figure out what the square root of 196 is. It's 14, so that's like saying multiply by 14, so we're gonna divide by 14. So 56 divided by 14 is four. So the something, uh, we already did this. The box of something 64 is equal to four, and we literally already did this on this problem over here, and it's a cube root, so that means this box is a three. And that'd be your answer. Okay, so again, I found the square root of 196. It was 14. So then I divided by 14 to both sides. And it gave me the something root of 64 is equal to 4. And we already figured out that the cube root of 64 is equal to 4. So that box had to be a 3. Okay. Now, next step is ordering. Um, so remember guys, square roots have a plus minus, so there's two roots, so like the square root of one is one, but there'd be a plus one and a minus one, so two answers, okay? Um, and then we're going to kind of convert things to decimals to make it easy to order, like negative five and three fourths is negative 5.75, 3.85 is already there, the square root of seven 
is 2.6 as a decimal. So plus minus 2.6. And then the cube root of 64, we've already figured that out, is <laughs> 4. And cube roots only have one root. And then 15 divided by 3 is just 5. So let's put these in here. Looking at this, the least number is going to be B. At just about right there. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can, now that I've been all zoomed in for so long. Okay, so B would go almost to negative 6, right? Negative 5.75. Um, and then the next least number would be negative 2.6. So that's about halfway to negative 3. So there's the first D. Remember if there's a square root, you're going to have that letter repeat. Okay. And then the next least number would be negative 1, so A. And then the next one would be positive 1, which is A. And then the next one would be 2.6, so D. And then 3.85 would be right around there. Okay. And then 4 is E. And then F is 5. And I think I got everything. B, 2 A's, C, 2 D's, E, F, yeah. So, from least to greatest, just reading it just like I wrote it, it should go B, D, A, A, D, C, E, F. Just like that. Good. Again, just ordering numbers. Best way to do it is convert them to their decimal form. Okay. And again, if you can't remember how to convert a radical to a fraction or decimal, like if you got the square root of 7, you just push the fraction of decimal button, this button right there, and that converts it to a fraction or, or a decimal. Sorry. Okay. And then the last section here are rational versus irrational. So here you're trying to figure out if they are um, the same, or sorry, rational numbers, irrational numbers are the numbers that go on forever without repeating. Um, and rational numbers uh, are terminating decimals or can be written as a fraction, right? Like, or repeat the same decimal number over and over. So pi is the prime example of an irrational number, okay? It goes on forever, like people brag about how many digits they can write pi, right? So that is an irrational number. Negative 4.5, that's a terminating decimal that is rational. Square root of 121, we have to check these. Um, make sure that it is uh, either irrational or rational. Your calculator will tell you. Square root of 121 is 11, so that is definitely rational. Whoops, I don't want to put 11 there, I want to put it rational. Okay, and then 5 eighths, that's a fraction, that's like the definition of rational, right? Anything that can be written as a fraction is rational. And then the cube root of 65, so we're going to put this in here, cube root 65. This is irrational, right? It goes on forever, they're not repeating numbers, right? It's just a bunch of series of numbers. So obviously it stops right here at the end of your calculator, but your calculator will round up so it doesn't, because it can't do something going on forever either. So if it goes to the edge of your calculator screen, it is going to be irrational. And then 12, whole number, obviously it is irrational. Okay. And that is your review. I know this is kind of a long review, but if there's anything that you struggled with or anything, make sure you ask your teachers. Um, we're here to help. We want to help. And uh, I will see you guys out there.